Not what you can do for me, I'll put your candidate can do for me. Uh, I'm sorry. This one's by invitation only. Yeah. Consider me a member of the working press. I'm covering the story from a newspaper. Uh-huh. You're here looking for blood. We all are aware of that. So stay at your own risk. Brian's still taking care of their own, eh, Johnny? Well, if I didn't know before that Joe was nothing but a stand-in for Frank, I certainly do know. Johnny, what's all that about? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my goodness. More Ryan bodyguards. Hello, Jack. How are you? Fine, Ray. How are you? Oh, fine. What's this? No crew? Nope. Ah. You and I have not been formally introduced. However, I know that you're Lee Kirkland. I'm Ray Woodard. I'm a good friend of your father's. I don't think you want to talk to me. Hmm. What makes you say that? Because you're not a friend of my father's. You're one of the many women that my father has slept with, and that's all. My mother is my father's friend. Oh, my. They're traveling in Spain at the moment. And blissfully happy, no doubt. Good. We all need our dreams. Hang on to yours, dear. I don't deal in dreams, Mrs. Woodard. I deal in reality. You want to know what's real? All right. Since you're so interested in talking to me, I'll tell you what's real. Take notes, Jack. She gets a kick about it, then you're taking notes. My mother and my father are two flawed, loving human beings who have built a flawed but loving life together. You wanted to destroy that. I suppose that's because that's what you do. You destroy. But you couldn't do that. And Hollis Kirkland is still married to the same woman that he will always be married to. And you, I take it, are uh, out for greener pastures. Are you after me? Are you after Mr. Finelli, uh, Ms. Coleridge? All of us, perhaps. Uh, like mother, like daughter. She's more considerate than I am, but thank you. Kirk deserves better. And now, if you will excuse me, I have another report. I don't excuse you, Mrs. Woodard. You invited this. One last point about reality. It takes a whole lot more strength and courage to hold a family together than to wreck it. My mother's got you beat hands down. And wherever Daddy may rest his head upon occasion, he always knows where home is. Uh, Mrs. Woodard, would you care to make a statement as to why you came here? <laughs> Not at the moment. Uh -huh. you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Uh, why? Why? You were wonderful. <sighs> oh, I think that's the first kind word I've had to say about my parents in 20 years. Well, it worked. <laughs> After what that woman has had from you by way of a friend, to have her come in here and gloat. To... What, no camera crew, Jack? Well, I think she regrets those words right about now. I think I'd like to make her eat them. Well, that's a good idea. I'll give that some thought. I think it's one of the better things that could have happened. I mean, that room is flowing with adrenaline. And for once, Ray got her own. And it was no skin off my nose. Or Frank's. What do you mean by that? I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm edgy. Yeah, well, it's kind of tough going through this without Frank, isn't it? Yeah, I miss him a lot. I can't believe it. As if the Woodard papers weren't already down on you. So now we're going to think about the morning editions. We'll dig up some way to run a headline that damns you. Oh, no, forget about the morning editions, will you? You're right. Could have been a lot worse, I know. Ray would have could have walked out of here with a black eye. <laughs> they ready for Julia? Yeah, I'll give the TV people another minute. Oh, at least Frank wasn't around. We can count ourselves lucky on that score. If she had seen him here, we would have had a real no. Donnie Brooks. I can't let that go by. You know, I am tired of everybody breathing a sigh of relief because Frank is not around here. We are not ditching him. He is not the kiss of death. He is a man who has been wronged. And he is determined that those wrongs will not affect me. You know, this campaign is very difficult for him. 
Because in spite of everything that he could give us, he's got to stay away, and he does. And I want him here. I need him here. And in spite of that, he stays away. He's kind, he's steady. He's dealing with all this pain all by himself. Have you once thanked him for that? Have you said one word of gratitude Jillian, to him? Jillian, you know I appreciate it. No, no, Joe, him. I want you to thank him. Fine. Of course I will. And I also want everybody involved in this effort to know what Frank is doing for us, not to us. We clear about that? Absolutely. I'll spread the word. Yeah, also spread the word the next man, woman, or child that I hear express satisfaction that Frank is not around here. It's going to find themselves not around here, too. Right. Just what I was thinking. Good. Fortunately, I, um... I feel Frank's support no matter where I am. So with that, why don't we get started? And it's going to be terrific. That's the spirit. Frank's a lucky man. I know he's cheering for you right this minute. Thanks, Johnny. Frank Ryan, I need to see you right away. I'm afraid you'll have to break that appointment. This can't wait. Look, look. One way or the other, I am going to talk to you this morning. Now, if you want to make a fuss about it, that's your choice. Good, I'm glad you see it my way. I'm at 539 Cabrini, apartment 3A. Hurry. Mm -hmm. 